diagram of information which reveal that points directly humor, to creation. And every page has a scripture at the bottom. The book begins with the explanation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every book not only has 420 pages, but it has a DVD covering all of those pages. So if you just had one of these books, it's a daily devotion. If you had one of these books with this scientific information pointing directly to verification of Scripture, if you had it to read, and if you had it on your computer, you could send one to Aunt Susie Q or Uncle Bill, or you could copy that entire, you would have the privilege of copying that entire DVD and sending it to every person in your ministry. That's your business, what you do with it. So, uh, I was just reading last night, uh, November, this is just one. Oh, here's a page on Neanderthals inventing superglue. Wow. Do you know that every one of us has a little DNA, Neanderthal DNA in us? If we're from Europe, all Europeans have some intermarriage DNA. The Neander we have 1,350 cc's of cranial capacity, brain power. The Neanderthals had 1,450 cc's. And the Cro-Magnons had 1,650 cc's. We're not the smartest that's ever been. In fact, we're kind of the bottom of the barrel. Now, it's class time. Are you taking notes? Let me prove what I just said. The most recent published geneticist analysis of a study that took place over a decade shows that every generation accumulates, on average, 100 new detrimental genetic errors. When your dad said, I'm a better man than you are, he was right. <laughs> he may not have had the computers that you and I have, but we are losing it. We now have, are you taking notes? We now have over 16,000 genetic errors in our genome. And this is from the scientific literature over 16,000. When we reach 20,000, the human race will no longer be viable for reproduction. We're in trouble, and we're assimilating, every generation assimilating, on average, 100 new detrimental genetic errors. It looks like whoever created us and whoever wound this thing up needs to come back and straighten it out. Well, I read an old book <laughs> where he promised he is going to come back. And his name is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the Messiah of Israel and the Savior of the world. So we have a generation that knows not Joseph nor Joseph's God. We have a generation that worships science. We have a generation that needs, your children, your grandchildren need scientific information. Otherwise, they're laughed out of class. Everything you need is in this one book. So I won't read Neanderthals inventing superglue, but they did in a very sophisticated manner. Uh, if you had one of these books, you could read that if you wanted to. Um, November the 2nd, I was reading this last night. It's about the bees. There are four different articles in here on the bees. Bees are stunningly intelligent. Now, we are distributing this book at our expense at the Creation Evidence Museum to every high school student in the entire nation of Fiji. Fiji is the opposite spot of the globe from Jerusalem. And Jesus said, Ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. That's Fiji. It is the opposite spot of the globe from Jerusalem and everything in between. I've been working in and out of Fiji for 41 years. We have a very special arrangement, and there should be a photo of this book up on the screen. A.V., is it there? Oh, it's... Oh, 
if I were a mother, I'd have eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> Mothers have, you know. <laughs> we have a special, we have been authorized by the Ministry of Education in Fiji to present at our expense one of these books to every high school student in the entire nation of Fiji. And as we present this, I have to take with me a credentialed scientist. We have their authorization to hold a one-hour auditorium special session at every high school in the entire nation. I have to take with me a certified scientist, and he, they want their students to be interested in science, but they have a background of having been converted from cannibalism to Christianity, so they're willing for us to reinforce the Christian message. So, after I introduce a scientist to speak, then I speak on science for a moment, for a few minutes, and then I lead into the fact that the greatest scientist who ever lived was not Albert Einstein. The greatest scientist who ushered in the scientific revolution that got us to the moon and back safely, the greatest scientist was who? Speak out. Talk back to me, just don't throw anything at me. Well, Jesus, absolutely. <laughs> 